Hi, I thought I'd do a, a quick little video showing how to set up and use an Arduino Mega to run a CO2 laser cutter. This laser cutter uh, I got uh, for a very reasonable price, put it that way, uh, predominantly because the control system, the inbuilt microcontroller uh, and dongle and all the other bits and pieces that come with a lot of these very cheap Chinese laser cutters was broken. So the whilst the laser cutter fired up, it ran, uh, it would cut the last file that was stored in the memory of the laser cutter soft, uh, control unit itself. Uh, I had no way to create new files and send those new files to the controller because of issues with the, uh, the little licensed dongle that came with it uh, and the software. So rather than scrap the machine, um, I got hold of it for, as I say, a very reasonable price and I decided to have a look around and see whether there was a possibility to use something like an Arduino to run it. And thankfully, somebody had already been there, had already done the work, and I was able to utilise and copy that work uh, and get the system to uh, function pretty easily, very cheaply, uh, and actually to a, a good standard. Certainly, it seems to be as good as the sorts of software that come with these things in the first place. So what I'm going to do is run you through the setup of hardware, what I did on my system in order to be able to use uh, an Arduino to run it, uh, how you operate the software, how you put the, um, the modified uh, software onto the Arduino uh, and how you also use the, the front end uh, of uh, a different program called Inkscape to actually create the G-code files to send to the laser cutter. Now, unfortunately, this isn't a step-by-step -step guide insofar as I have my system running currently and I don't particularly want to dismantle it all and put it back together, but I'll try and show you in as simple steps as I can how uh, I use this, um, how to incorporate uh, the work that other people have done beforehand and how to hopefully get a functioning system pretty quickly. Well, the first step is to have a look at the source material that I used uh, in order to, to do this conversion. Um, as I mentioned, I'd hoped that somebody had gone before me uh, and done this work. So, you know, like a lot of these things, if you can copy what somebody else has done, it makes your life a lot easier. And thankfully, by doing a quick later search for Arduino CO2 laser cutter, as you can see up here, the first link that comes up is a link to this website called Adventures in DIY Engineering 40 Watt Chinese CO2 Laser Upgrade. And this page here, uh, let's just close the, the cookies, um, published in August 2014 by, uh, let's have a look who, who did this. by Zothar, um, whoever that might be, uh, has produced a quite comprehensive guide on how they went through and took one of their little uh, 40 watt Chinese CO2 laser cutters and upgraded it with an Arduino uh, and a RAMPS board. Now RAMPS is uh, an acronym for a stepper driver controller board that's predominantly used in running 3D printers. Yeah. So the main hardware chunk of this laser cutter is actually 3D printer hardware that's been modified. Uh, it's got modified G-code on, um, on the Arduino Mega and it uses a little plugin for a program called Inkscape to create the uh, G-code files uh, using SVG type graphics. So this particular page here, it runs through uh, an introduction about what they wanted to do, which is sort of similar to me that had issues with the control systems that they were using and wanted to try and use something um, open source and to use something Arduino based to uh, to get theirs working. And there's a picture you can see of, of their particular system. Uh, you'll have to excuse the video quality. I'm just propping the camera up in front of the monitor because I don't have any fancy uh, image or video capture software, but you can see it's a sort of fairly generic laser cutter broadly similar to the one I've got although mine's a, a little larger got a slightly bigger print bed mine's got a standalone stand and various other bits but the principles are identical and if you've got a similar laser cutter with a similar setup um, you know they're, they're all different shapes and sizes but they all use a laser tube hidden in the back of the laser some mirrors 
to bounce around the uh, laser beam from the tube to the cutting head uh, and use stepper drivers, stepper motors to move a gantry forward and back side to side to produce the, um, the, the cutting. And it's set up very similar to a 3D printer uh, in terms of the gantry movement uh, and that's why the 3D printer software seems to work quite nicely because the, um, the, the sort of setup and arrangement is broadly similar. So uh, this person runs through uh, different electronics that you need. Now I deviated slightly from their setup. They actually used an entire uh, Arduino with the stepper driver board for a 3D printer, but my laser cutter already had stand, uh, sort of standalone stepper drivers built into it, which are much bigger and much more powerful than the ones that you normally get with 3D printers. Uh, and so to save a bit of money and to use the hardware that was already in the system that I knew would work with the motors, because obviously this is the motors, stepper motors and the drivers that came with it, I knew these would work together. I decided to bypass this step of using the ramps board uh, and wire the Arduino directly to the stepper drivers that are in there, um, let's say saving a bit of cost and also utilising components that are already within the machine. So on this page we've got guidance on how to mount and install the Arduino which is going to be different depending on your laser cutter and how you want to mount it. Again I deviated from the steps here because my laser cutter is a little different but there is a nice little diagram here which shows the wiring of the stepper controllers and again I deviated but the fundamental principles are the same. We've got an Arduino that feeds pulses out to the stepper drivers whether they're inbuilt into a ramps board or whether they're separate discrete components and also connects to the laser supply which drives the laser cutter uh, and various safety interlocks and things which you can choose to use if you wish I decided not to um, so obviously don't stick your face in your laser cutter laser beams can be dangerous um, it gives you some example wiring of the um, laser power supply itself now mine was pretty much the same as shown up here we have a, a high trigger or a low trigger and you'll need to use whichever one uh, you want depending on your laser supply we've got power settings um, input voltage various bits and pieces um, to to fire and adjust the power input on the laser cutter yeah. some of these systems you have to use a, a separate knob to adjust the laser power but with mine I was able to uh, use the pulse width modulation output from the Arduino fed directly into the power input on the laser supply so that I can actually adjust the power of the laser cutter using Inkscape by setting properties uh, and then the, that's incorporated into the g-code so I can automatically adjust the level of power um, either depending on things like the grayness or the blackness of an image so it will vary the power in response to changes in, in grayscale color or just by physically changing the power settings in the properties of an individual layer. You can see there's some more about wiring. Uh, they've got a screen here which I decided not to use again to save some costs. Um, setting up various bits and pieces about the laser but the important bits here are down the bottom of the article which gives you links Oh, sorry, about halfway up the article which gives you links to the software now this is the important part because this is where a lot of the hard work has been done in advance so there's a github link here to the Marlin firmware so Marlin is a type of 3d printer firmware and somebody's already gone beforehand and made modifications to this firmware um, to actually use it to run a laser cutter so if you click the github link it takes you here to uh, turnkey Tyranny, hopefully that's pronounced properly, uh, build log laser cut at Marlin and in here is a, um, uh, a little script, a little file, a sketch for the Arduino which converts the 3D printer software into something that's suitable to run a laser cutter and there's some information about here, some safety warnings, how you install and compile it, I'm not going to particularly go through this because I'm not very experienced with Arduino. Um, and the, um, the the Arduino IDE and how you write all this stuff. Um, thankfully for me, it all basically worked straight out of the box, so I didn't need to do anything to this. I, I just changed the settings to be compatible with my laser cutter in terms of bed size uh, and X and Y directions, which are very simple to set up, and I'll show you in a sec. And then uploaded it to the Arduino, and it basically worked. 
So once you've read the instructions, you can clone or download. So you can just download a zip file of the modified 3D printer firmware. See it downloading at the bottom here. Uh, you will need Arduino IDE installed, which is this little piece of software here, which uh, allows you to modify, write, and upload sketches to an Arduino. So, once the file has downloaded, you can extract it. Let's have a look at what we get in there. So, this is the um, the software we've got some add-ons for Arduino which I didn't need to use on mine particularly although um, there are some graphics libraries that have caused me some issues in the past called uhg.lib which are for running the little LCD screen now I don't run it uh, the LCD screen on mine but it is an integral part of the Marlin firmware so if you have any issues with the uhg.lib file not compiling properly make sure that you've got the latest versions um, and just check and see what the errors are. Um, I found that one computer was having issues with uploading the firmware um, because of issues with uhg.lib compatibility. I tried a different computer running a different operating system and it worked perfectly. I happen to be using Ubuntu Linux on my machine here but you can use Mac, Windows, they all work the same. So in here we've got the Marlin firmware and there's various bits and pieces, but the uh, the important part is the um, is the Marlin file. So if we open up Arduino, navigate to the um, file. It's the Marlin.ino file. If we open it, so this is the sketch here, and it contains all the information for the Arduino Mega to run it as a laser cutter. So as I say, everybody's been here first. And done all this work and it's pretty straightforward something you'll need to consider is that you'll need to change the configuration so that's this little tab here the configuration file to be suitable and compatible uh, with your laser cutter now generally what I found is the only things you need to consider are uh, direction of the stepper motors now on my drivers there's actually a little dip switch that allows me to change the direction but alternatively, if your stepper drivers didn't have a dip switch which allowed you to reverse the direction in sort of a hardware fashion, you could go in here and change the um, settings on a software ba uh, basis. Uh, and the other thing you'll need to consider is the size of your bed. So as standard, let's just have a look, where is it? As standard, I think this had a 200 by 300, which is roughly an A4 sized uh, bed put in there. Uh, it's got information about end stops, pull up and pull down resistors, which again in my situation worked fine. I used uh, micro switches and end, as end stops. It originally had hall sensors and magnets, um, but uh, micro switches seem to work far, far easier. Now here we go, we've got a K40 laser cutter engraver. So we've got the maximum X and Y dimensions here. Now the standard is 337 millimeters by 230 millimeters. These dimensions are in millimeters. So what you'll need to do is measure the size of your bed and set these figures here to be the size of your bed. Uh, Z position doesn't matter because in most situations you don't have a stepper motor that runs the Z axis. So in the case of my laser cutter, I had a 400 by 300 bed, so I changed these figures to 400 by 300. And then you can go through and, and see if there's any other settings um, that that look uh, like you might need to change them. So in my situation, that was the only thing I had to change was the X and Y, the maximum size of the um, the bed. And in my case, it was 400 by 300 millimeters. You may have to do different configuration files, and this is where <laughs> I won't be able to help you because a lot of the stuff in here is way beyond my knowledge. There are comments. You, know, you can see sections here which tell you um, the sorts of things that each of the uh, bits of code below do. The things with the double forward, forward slash in front of them are comments. So you could potentially read through and see if there's anything in there. But again, in my case, it, it works straight away. So once that's done, you can compile the software and then you can upload that to the Arduino. In my case, I didn't have, I didn't have the Arduino Mega selected 
and it's not plugged in because I don't intend to reflash the firmware on mine. Um, if you need any additional help on doing this sort of stuff, there's lots and lots of guides out there on how to flash um, firmware or, or software or sketches from Arduino IDE onto the Arduino Mega. Hopefully if you're embarking down this route you've got at least a little bit of experience using microcontrollers and what you do and don't need to do with them. I did but my my experience was very limited to just playing around with the starter kit first so I sort of understood the vague principles of it and then just using the Marlin software changing the size and the configuration uh, tab uh, and then putting it straight on the laser cutter or, or straight on the Arduino Mega and it worked thankfully <laughs> right so here we can see um, what makes the uh, Arduino and laser cutter software tick now <laughs> I apologize it is a mess um, when I put this together I just use random bits of wire and, and anything I had knocking about and it is a bit of a rat's nest but if you wire it up following the diagram shown on the uh, the website earlier follow the instructions on there uh, piece it together bit by bit remember to label cables so there are bits of tape stuck on those cables you can probably just about see and those labels have got annotations on there so that um, it's relatively easy to trace back problems now part of the reason I'm showing you this or making this video is I had to do a bit of work on this recently because the power supply the low voltage power supply which runs the stepper motors that came with the laser cutter died um, just stopped working wasn't putting any voltage out uh, and so the whole thing stopped working so I've had to replace the power supply that came with it with a new one um, and so I've had the side off messing around with it and I thought I'd take this opportunity to go over some of the, the things if, if this helps anybody um, you can see the two uh, silver boxes on the um, thing just here these two uh, now the power supply that came with it was a multi-voltage unit so it had five volts which we don't use because I'm actually running the Arduino um, hardwired into the computer hardwired using USB cable so the five volts that the Arduino requires to run is actually fed to it by the USB cable now you can run a screen you can put an SD card in it um, like you do with 3d printers you can run it as a standalone item however I found that generally because we're not doing 20 plus hour prints in some cases like you might on a 3d printer everything is relatively short burst of, of sort of productivity but actually having um, the ability to print off an e or, or laser cut from an SD card is not a big issue for me so in my case I didn't bother wiring the Arduino Mega up to a 5 volt supply I just plugged the USB cable into a computer and that runs the Arduino so uh, the power supply that came with it also had 12 volts and 24 volts so the 12 volts was used to run some fans and some lighting that's inside and the 24 volts is used to run the stepper motors in my situation you may have different voltages on your stepper motors that's something that you're going to need to figure out um, so the larger of the two boxes is a 24 volt power supply and that directly feeds the two stepper drivers and the smaller box is a 12 volt power supply that I just used to run some PC fans um, and some lighting now the two stepper drivers are these black boxes up here so one of those runs each of the two stepper motors now this doesn't have a z-axis so whilst you can move the z-axis up and down manually to focus the laser it's, it's not something that's controlled by the software in my situation those two boxes run the two stepper motors that move the gantry uh, in the x and y direction uh, those are fed with 24 volts from the 24 volt power supply and they're also fed with an enable signal from the Arduino which starts and stops the stepper drivers and are also fed with the step information so they're fed with little pulses of information which move the stepper drivers and the stepper motors one step at a time um, also in part of that is a direction control so the main things that really are required to get the stepper motors to move is feeding the drivers with 24 volts feeding them with a direction signal so if you set that pin high the stepper motors move in one direction and if you pull that pin low they move in the others in the other direction and by feeding it steps you can see the Arduino Mega in the middle here there you go so that's the the brains of the operation that's got the modified Marlin firmware that we were just showing or we're just talking about uh, and then sends those step pulses to the stepper drivers to move it's very much as I say the same as the 3d printer but instead of using the little ramps board 
with the tiny little stepper drivers on it. Uh, I use the drivers that, that thankfully were discrete components in my laser cutter. If the stepper drivers had been incorporated into the standard microcontroller, I probably would have had to have done something different. Uh, you can also see the large high voltage power supply that feeds the laser. Uh, that is fed with mains 240 volts in the case of the UK. It's also fed with a, a fire signal. Um, so when you um, feed 5 volts into the fire signal, the laser power supply actually fires. Uh, so the Arduino turns that on and off as required to do the cutting or the etching or the rastering. Uh, and it's also fed with a pulse width modulation, a PWM signal and that controls the power all the way from 0%, which is off obviously, all the way up to 100%. And that's something that we can set in the Inkscape plugin or the Inkscape software that produces the G-code. Um, and uh, then that, that controls the laser power. Now, as I say, it's, it's a bit of a rat's nest, but all of this wiring exactly follows the wiring diagram that was on the, uh, the website we showed earlier. If you've got any questions specifically about that, you can drop a comment in the comments section and I'll try my best to answer them. Um, here's the laser cutter itself. It's a fairly standard unit. You see I've got some LED strip lighting on the inside of the lid so that when the lid is shut you can actually see what it's doing properly through the um, sort of slightly obscured laser safe glass. We've got the, um, the, the focal mirror. Here, which collects the uh, laser from the mirrors uh, and then directs it down onto the workpiece. So we'll just adjust the light slightly. You can see the tip there. Now this has got an air assist which is very handy because it reduces um, burning and smoke production on the um, surface of the, the workpiece that we're cutting. Uh, and it also helps to keep the optics clean as well. Inside the laser cutter We've got the stepper driver, this controls one of the axis via a belt, which is here, which moves the uh, gantry from side to side. And then very the way down there at the back, unfortunately the light's pretty poor. And then the light down, and there's the other stepper driver at the back, which moves the gantry forward and backwards. Also inside the laser cutter is a large extractor fan. Laser cutting produces a lot of smoke, so the extractor fan helps to drag that air out um, and clear the smoke. Uh, it's also a water-cooled 40 watt CO2 laser, and so there's a large plastic tank below the laser cutter with a submersible pump in it, and that pushes water through uh, the laser tube uh, and then back again to act as a coolant. Now in order to produce the G-code for the laser cutter, uh, we use a, a piece of software called Inkscape. This is available for PC, Mac and Linux. I'm, I'm running Ubuntu on this machine um, for various reasons. We can fire up Inkscape and then use it as a vector graphics drawing software to uh, produce drawings, etchings, anything like that, and then export those as a G-code, which we can then send to the laser cutter. Now. I have a template set up here, which is set up to the size of my bed. So this is the actual dimensions of my bed on the uh, oh, that's a bit weird. Uh, on the bed of my laser cutter. Now we can do various different things here. We can either use the drawing tools to create shapes uh, and cut these out. So if you wanted to make a simple keyring, you could, for instance, make a, a box of the, the shape that you required and then put some text inside it. Uh, and then use that to cut it out or anything you like. In addition to this, you can also take pre-made images or vector graphics files and use these. Now I quite like a website called Pixbay, or Pixabay because this has got loads of free to use high quality images as they says on the front page. So if you wanted to search for something you could, I don't know, put in something like Star Wars for instance, doesn't really matter what, 
Now there's lots of pictures and obviously some of these things we are not going to be able to laser cut. Laser cutting doesn't work magic so we couldn't laser cut this photo for instance, that's not going to be doable. But what you can do is take simple black and white photographs or line drawings or things like that and you can etch them. So this for instance would be a prime example of something that would be perfect to do on a laser cutter. Now you can do for instance free downloads as SVGs or JPEGs, to be honest I tend to just copy the image and then paste it into the workspace. So here I can decide where I want it on the piece of material I'm going to cut, how big I would like it and various other things. Now Inkscape has got lots of clever little functions in it. So for instance this is currently an image, you can see at the bottom it says image and so that would cut it as a raster which is where the laser moves from side to side uh, and sort of draws out, plots out the image um, a bit like a plotter or a printer. What Inkscape also allows you to do is to take an image and then you can trace it. So up here we've got path and there's this option here to trace a bitmap. So what we can do is we can take our image which was selected and we can trace around it. So let's, um, you'll have to play around with this to get the hang, but for instance, you can do a brightness cutoff and set it at half. So anything more than 50% gray becomes a line. Anything less than that gets ignored. You can hit OK, close it, and then what Inkscape has done is it's created a copy of our image. So instead of being an image, you can see down here it says image. If we click the other one, and it says path. Now what a path does is the laser will actually draw around the outline of all these things. Now by default, Inkscape sort of fills it all in black, but to get an idea of what it would actually look like, you can select the fill and stroke colors. So you can see that if we were then to send this to the laser, it would actually draw around all these lines. So that's very handy if you've got a shape of something you want to cut out. You can find a picture of something or a, a pre-made illustration or graphic. You can trace around it using the trace bitmap tool and then extract out the bit that you want to actually trace uh, or that you want to cut out and then you can use that as a cutting mask. So. If, for instance, we wanted to cut this shape out, what you could potentially do is to both raster the image itself, so run backwards and forwards and actually create the etched drawing on a piece of wood and then also extract the outline um, of the, um, the piece and then cut around it. For this simple demonstration, what we're just going to do is take the image, uh, we'll make it smaller so it, it does it nice and quickly, and what we're going to do is we're going to raster this onto uh, a piece of, in this case, just a bit of spare MDF I've got to show as an example. Now at this point we need to set things like speeds, power levels, stuff like that. It's, it's dead straightforward. Um, so we select the image and then on the right hand side here we can see now if you download the software from the um, this website here, it's got couple of extra bits you need is an Inkscape plugin. So you can download this Inkscape plugin here and you put it in the plugins directory of Inkscape which is dead simple. It's the same as all sorts of different software. You just download the little plugin, dump it in the plugins folder. It works. And also in this GitHub link it contains an example blank, uh, whatever it is, designs in here. It, it has a, a blank cutting surface, this file here, which has got in it already this sort of setup. So this is what the modified Marlin software likes to use. Uh, we've got a power setting at the front here and we've got a feed speed. You've also got things about pulse, pulses per minute I think they are or per millimeter or what have you which gives a sort of stippled effect. I don't I don't use those, they don't work particularly well but what you can do is then use these figures here to set the power level and the feed. Now I found with my setup that a power level of 20% works very well for, for rasters and a speed, now this is in millimetres per minute so we can set a speed of 3500 millimetres per minute now if we make sure our image is on that, you can see down here it says an image and gives the dimensions and it's also got the feed or the, the power is 20% laser power 
and 3,500 millimeters per minute. So there's our, our little uh, X-Wing fighter. It's an image, so it's going to cut it as a raster. We've set the power to 20%. We've set the speed to 3,500 millimeters per minute. So for my setup, most of the things that I raster are done at 20% power, 3,500 millimeters per minute. Then what we can do is we can export this uh, and turn it into G-code. So the little G-code generation plugin, which I just mentioned, goes in extensions. You can do export, and then it's this turnkey laser exporter and it produces uh, this little um, window, so we call it X-Wing as the file name. You can set default cut feed rate and travel speed, you don't really need to mess around with those because the feed rate, uh, cut power and everything like that is all set up in the layer height, so I tend to just leave those as the standard, you can get it to X uh, default to home before and after cutting. There's also some advanced tools. So for instance, this optimized raster horizontal scanning speed is very handy to speed up rastering. So rather than running to the full width of the image every time, so the laser would run all the way across this blank white space, what this option does here is means that the laser only follows the outline of the actual image, which saves a huge amount of time rastering. Now, as it does say, it will optimize the raster path that may cause slight overburn at the edges. That does happen. So if you set the speed really fast, I have found that you can get some extra burning at the edges. Um, but if you keep the speed reasonable, then it works well. My This particular laser cutter will etch or will uh, raster up to 6,000 millimeters per minute. But if I select the optimized raster horizontal scanning speed, you get a lot of a sort of juddering, the occasional missed step. And that's because rather than slowly or gently decelerating the um, laser head or the gantries when it reaches the end of the image it stops it abruptly and moves it back in the other direction so it really chops down how much the laser moves to, to speed things up massively which is great but that sudden abrupt change in direction can cause cause issues if you run too fast so if the image is very dense you know the entire outline of the image contains um, material or, or uh, graphics then I'll take that off and I'll run it at a faster cut speed because it's going to move the majority of the width of the image anyway um, and it allow, that allows me to run faster and it gives a sort of smoother deceleration at the end of each lateral movement but for something like this X-Wing where you know more than 50% of the image is, is actually blank space then we slow it down a bit and tell it to optimise the, um, the path so do all of this, hit apply and then it says image will be cut as a raster. Now you do need to check, just as a little sort of sense check, that things that you expect to be cut as a raster are cut as rasters, and things that you expect to be cut as vectors are cut as vectors, but in this case that's worked. Close. So now we have generated G-code. Now in order to send this G-code to the laser cutter, we need to either put it on a, on a memory card and plug it into the Arduino if you're using the full system like a 3D printer which comes with the memory card slot, the screen and all that kind of stuff. As I mentioned numerous times I don't have that um, because for me you know this will take 10 minutes to cut. I don't need to um, set it going and walk away. I'm quite happy to sit here for 10 minutes while it cuts or even walk away anyway uh, but have the ability to intervene with the computer, um, stop the print easily and do other stuff like that. So I, I prefer to run mine plugged in. So I've plugged the Arduino Mega in with a USB cable. So now the Arduino Mega is powered up from the computer. The laser cutter is turned on. Um, and what we're gonna do is fire up a, a piece of software called Pronterface. Now Pronterface is used to send 3D models or uh, 3D printing G codes to 3D printers. But in this case, we can use it to send uh, our laser cutting G code to the laser cutter. It's a standard piece of software again I believe it's available for Windows, Mac and Linux. I'm using Linux so in my case uh, I need to just fire up a terminal and launch it because Linux. If you're using Linux I found that in my case I have to run it 
as a, you can see up here I have to run it as sudo um, just so it has access to the USB port I know it's not best practice to run software in sudo mode but ho hum oh I've got the password wrong so pronto face loads up now on pronto face let's just move the camera a little bit up at the top here we have connect so I've I've plugged it in already, we need to connect. So now the computer is connected to the Arduino. And we can see here it's said now the printer is online. It's just gone through some various sort of standard setup stuff, which never really changes, it's the same every time, it doesn't matter. Or we can load a file. We've got our X-Wing file here that we produced. It's loaded it up and we can hit go, but first obviously we need to put some material in the uh, laser cutter. So I'm going to use just a scrap piece of MDF I've got. I've cut some shapes of Africa out for somebody who wanted some shapes of Africa to print or to paint, as, as you do. Um, so we can insert the uh, piece of MDF. I think you can see it lines up with the corner of the bed here, and I've made sure that the X and Y home on my laser head aligns with the corner of the um, tray there so I can just slot stuff into the corner and I know that it's you know within half a millimetre or so lined up. It's quite handy to set up, it's not vital but it does mean that when you come to um, put pieces of work in where orientation and positioning are important then you can do it. Now something I've found with other laser cutters you can move the head to a position and start cutting from there so you can almost manually move the head to a position and choose where you start cutting a piece of material. Certainly a lot of modern ones do that. This doesn't. So it always considers everything from the X, Y point at home. So you need to make sure that the position of your um, your material and your, uh, your uh, design corresponds with where you want to put it on the piece of, of MDF or plywood or whatever you're cutting. You also need to check the spacing. Now from my laser with the head I've got a uh, distance of 10 millimeters between the tip of the laser and the work piece is, is my optimal focus point. So I've got a piece of wood which happens to be 10 millimeters thick. I can just poke that under the laser head and check that the laser is adjusted. And in this case, yes, it's uh, adjusted adequately. This helps with the light. Okay. So now we've got this in place, I'm going to hit go and we're going to cut it. So then we can see it's finished cutting the uh, raster of the X-Wing and just to show you uh, vector cutting, um, I processed that same file using the trace bitmap uh, option I showed you earlier and uh, we'll just run that quickly now. So here it's just tracing the outline rather than filling in all the details that we did on the other one. Level of how they came out of the set. Now, if you wanted to, you can also set this to full power at 100%. This is running at about 12% power at about 2000 millimeters a minute just to draw the outline, but uh, I found that with 
watt laser and using a 3 mm MDF running at 100% power and about 500 millimeters per minute cut speed will actually cut all the way through on one single pass which I might show you quickly in a second on. Here's the little square we cut out. See, you've got the burnt edges, a little bit of scorching around the edge, uh, but generally not too bad. Um, depending on what you're doing, you can actually sand that off very quickly with a little uh, little bit of sandpaper. It's pretty easy. If you've got one of those sort of mouse sanders, you can just hit it with some 240 grit sandpaper, uh, and it knocks the, um, the scorching straight off. You can see that cut out really nicely, straight through, one go. And then. Is the etch now probably the power is a little bit too high you can see it's burned quite a long way through but you can see that's produced a, a pretty decent replica uh, of the image that we had on the screen you can see you can see if the camera will focus in sort of depth of, of cut that we're able to get depth of etch is quite deep so you could easily reduce the power levels uh, and get a slightly cleaner cut or a slightly cleaner etch um, and a bit less scorching but that's come out pretty nicely uh, and there's a the little um, vector one which didn't come out particularly nicely um, I simplified the um, the vector just using simplified path in Inkscape just to make it cut a little quicker and a little bit more straightforward but you get the idea you can see that it's traced around all the outlines and it's cut the same image as a vector. 